Red Rising, good afternoon and good evening. Y'all, today's reading is going to be number 16 in the series, Life After Puffy. Now, this one was added into the queue due to what happened on Friday. If you have not been keeping up with the case or you just decided that you needed to tap out, baby, I understand. But on Friday, there were videos shown in court and whatever was on those videos was so damaging, so damning that one of Puffy's lead defense attorneys literally quit in court, grabbed his attache and left. The lawyer that was the most vocal that spoke to the press the most, Mark Agnafilo, attorney Mark Agnafilo, he, re he removed himself from Puffy's defense team and he will no longer be defending him after whatever came out in court on Friday. Now it is alleged, and I have to say allegedly because I wasn't there, y'all wasn't there, okay? So it was alleged that eight videos um, were shown in court. There were six adults and two minors in those videos. Um, the minors both were young boys and what the witness claimed is that no one appeared to have knowledge that they were being recorded. They didn't, he said that they, their behavior appeared as if they didn't even know that a camera was in the room. It's disturbing because um, if I'm not mistaken, he said that one of the incidents with one of the young men happened in the bathroom. And it was evident that this person did not know that there was a camera. They didn't know that they were being recorded. And it's just like, this is this, this case is gonna get darker and darker and darker and more twisted. Now, why this is important that attorney Mark Agnafilo stepped down from this case is because Mr. Agnafilo is someone who is built for cases when it comes to trafficking. This is what he's known for. This is his specialty. And if he was on the prosecution's team, it would literally be a dream come true for the government against Mr. Combs. So he is the crown jewel or was the crown jewel of the defense team because these are the type of cases that he is known for and he has a really, really strong track record with winning his cases. Um, not only is he great at these types of cases, he's also worked as a legal analyst in these types of cases. So whatever could have possibly allegedly been on those videos had to be extremely damning because he decided to remove himself from the case on Friday, not after the trial, but actually during, you know, that, um, that court date because the trial hasn't started yet. It won't start until March. So he's like, if this is what they have before we go into um, trial, you're screwed and I'm, I'm out. So, whew, thank you for giving me that moment to explain that because I don't know if everybody who's watching this is, you know, um, up to speed on what happened on Friday, but it's major, okay? So if someone can do me a favor and timestamp this for the four minute and 55 second mark, I greatly appreciate you. And let's get into some things. 
angels, ancestors, and spirit guides of the highest heavenly order. Tap me into the energy around attorney Mark Agnafilo. Why did he step down? What was the reason that he actually recused himself from the defense team? Oh, wow. So I got one that just hit the table face down and another one, well, actually two other ones that hit the floor. Um, the two on the floor is um, the Four of Cups Unrequited Offer and the High Priestess. So, wow. It, it's like he was, he was, um, he felt like he, he literally was hit with an avalanche in court. It's like this information um, feels like he, hold on. Oh, it's another one down here. Pardon me, everybody. Yeah, he, he feels like he was in the dark. Something that came to light in court was way beyond what he knew about. And he realized that this, even though this is a huge case, there's a lot more to this case than what meets the eye as far as evidence is concerned, allegedly. And before I go any further, this reading is for entertainment purposes only. All things said are alleged. So the card that's face down, the moon. So you've got the high priestess, the five of cups, no, the four of cups, excuse me. The high priestess, the four of cups, and the nine of pentacles. Um, like I said, that very, very high level secrets that were an unrequited offer. And um, the nine of pentacles represents the independent woman or a person who, you know, is very well to do, but literally is on their own. The other, you know, indicator of being left to yourself would be like the hermit. And then you got the moon here. So he he felt like he he just you could have knocked him over with a feather i just put it like that whatever came out in court this was new to him and it was worse than he expected allegedly so five of swords is like really harsh communication and he knew that it was he was gonna have to go hard or go home okay so we have the the palace of wands which represents a you know a house of ambition passion okay um wands also can represent you know carnal energy okay phallic energy so it's it's like Oh gosh, it's like this this house, this 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 footage. The houses are literally considered to be homes of ill repute. All of all of the homes allegedly have this energy. So there could have been footage from multiple homes, but no matter what the footage is, they all came down to the same type of carnal energy and with the moon it's like you know this is this is a, a secret but the high priestess to the moon this is a very high level secret because i'm telling you it's this is sad because these people really really had no idea and i i'm getting the idea that with the moon here this could be such a surprise to some people that, you know, just imagine, okay, getting getting wasted and not remembering what happened the night before. So imagine you come up in this footage and not only did you not know you were in this footage, you don't even remember, okay? I'm getting the energy very, very strongly around someone that's in this footage that not only does not know that they've been recorded, but they don't even remember the occurrence.
And right there in that moment, boom, two of swords. That's it. it it's, it's go big or go home. He realized he had to go home because this was something that he could not argue. Um, eight of wands. It's, he felt, I'm hearing the word repulse. So he felt repulsed. He had to get out of there as soon as possible. It's one thing to hear something and to say, okay, well, let's play semantics. What do they have? What do they not have? Okay, well, they didn't say they have this. Definitely, I can argue this. I can argue that. It was like, you know, seeing was more than just believing. Seeing made him feel sick, allegedly. Like, this is the energy that I'm getting. It was like, it was like he realized he had, you know, um, made a deal with with something that was against his his beliefs. He had to make a choice to stand firm in his beliefs. Um, got the Six of Cups here that represents the past, and I want you to pay attention to the fact that this is a dot and a child. So there is some energy around what he saw allegedly with the child. And it's like, whatever he saw with the child tower moment, he, he felt at that moment, not only was it, you know, something that was infuriating to him personally, it was unwinnable at that point, allegedly. The Wheel of Fortune. Eight of Coins. So now it's like, it's, it's the energy of questioning, you know, throughout the years. All that this person has amassed, all of this wealth, everything that this person has worked for. It's like all of the, the glitz and the glamour of the situation went out the window. He finally got to separate the person from the persona. Oh, that's messed up. Uh, my spirit guides are saying it's like looking into the eyes of the devil for the first time and recognizing that it is him. So what, wow, it, whatever it was had to be extremely damning. Yeah, it's like, you know, he had to consider his options because this is a very, very major case, a very influential case. And this was stood to make him a lot of money. This this was going to be huge for his career and the type of work that he does. Eight of coins at the bottom of the deck. So I'm hearing I didn't want to be on the wrong side of history. Like... Uh, what, what my spirit guides are showing me is like all of these things were flashing through his mind as he was watching the videos, okay? So imagine sitting there in court and you, you know you're made for this. You know this is what it is that you do. This is your specialty. And as you watch this, it makes you think, you know, um, Do I really want to do this? If you can think of, uh, what's that movie with Keanu Reeves and um, was it Al Pacino? Devil's Advocate, where, you know, here it is. This is this high power case. This is one of the biggest cases of your career. This is definitely going to take you to a new level. You're going to ascend as a attorney but you've got to be able to stomach being in the presence of Satan himself. And if you pay attention to that movie, for those of you who have seen it, the devil came off as a very well-dressed, well-manicured, cavalier man who was very powerful and wealthy. He, you know had this this huge company he was you know a, a huge pillar in society and he would offer opportunities but the opportunities always
came with a, a like a catch 22. So he's sitting here thinking, you know, when the other shoe drops, how much worse could it get? And then the video start to play. And each one was worse than the last. I'm literally getting a, the feeling of someone who became sick to their stomach, but they had to, they had to keep a professional appearance. And boom, here it is. You got the chariot right under the moon. Soon as these secrets were exposed in this video, he had to go. It was immediate. He had to go, you know, on the first thing smoking. So here it is, the laugh now, cry later. And it's like, you know, he was sure of himself. He knew, you know, for the most part, where he felt like he fit in and where this case was going to go. But he definitely was crying later in his soul. And it's like, this is just the beginning. It's This is only, you know, the first of what could be many. I'm hearing, I'm not going down with the Titanic. Five of Swords. Yeah. So this is like, you know, harsh communication about what happened at this opulent house. And this felt like, you know, he, he felt like this, this is biting off way more than I can chew. Because once again, here's this very, very opulent man. He has the money. He can pay you. Like, there's so much wealth and so many opportunities that could come out of this situation. But he chose to cut this loose, to walk away. Yeah, he's not accepting calls from the family or anyone. Um, so, this isn't just a... He had an outburst and walked out. He quit. He He's not accepting any communication from his client or the family. Because this is, you know, Daddy Warbucks right here with all the money at the bottom of the deck, the King of Pentacles. So he's like, you know what? Keep that money. Don't call me. I won't call you. Page of Cups, okay? So Page of Cups is like, oh my gosh, this going up under the Six of Cups. And remember, the Six of Cups is a grown man and a small child. This was a young child. A Page of Cups is someone who is could be like maybe a preteen. This is somebody very young. If they are preteen, they looked even younger than what they were. They may be very small in stature. Um, at that point, it was like all the money in the world can't get me to take this case. I can't do it because here it is. You've got the Ten of Pentacles over here with the Wheel of Fortune. It, it was like it was a plethora of money and opportunities that come out of taking this case. Whatever he saw with the miners was like, absolutely not. Yeah, it's it's like, what else is this going to give birth to? What else is going to come out of this? Um, so he walked away from a very, and I mean, very, very lucrative case. Because here's the thing. This case is going to drag out. So he stood to make a ton of money off of this case. At least up until, you know, if his client was convicted or not. 
because his job was either to try to get him off or to minimize whatever the charges are. Um, he, he, he wanted no parts. Yeah, he, he's like, you know what? What goes around comes around. Um, he's looking at everything that's invested in this. He was considering his options. Um, there's something else that did not come out in court that I feel like he may have become privy to. And between that and whatever was on those videos, okay? He's, he's like, look. It don't matter how you slice it, honey. You're going to jail. I don't want any parts of this. This is a case that I can't win. And morally, I don't feel that I should. This is against, you know, my, my conscience. So for those of you that are new to me, um, the strength card is not just like the Leo card for me. This also represents the Lion of Judah, okay, which is the most high. So it's like his it's like his um religious or spiritual beliefs vexed him. He felt conviction about, you know, even accepting this money, making a deal with the devil. He felt some type of way about being what felt like the devil's advocate. And baby, look at this, the moon. You see this woman being held captive, being held away from everyone, um, being held against her will. There, there's something where he's just like, between those videos, and I, I really get it's the minors. The, it, how do I explain this? So, like I said, allegedly, because I wasn't there, y'all were there. So, allegedly, once they said that they had videos, he figured, you know, we'll go with the angle of, you know, folks had a little bit too much to drink. Um, I know that's a gray area because, you know, once somebody gets inebriated, you're not supposed to touch them because they can't consent. But, you know, he was he was gathering all of these thoughts in his head on how he would, you know, um, build his defense. And then as he watched, it just got worse and worse and worse. And it feels like in, in good conscience, he just could not spin this. It was nothing he could do with this. And it's just hands down. You, you might as well just cop a plea because you're going to jail. Knight of Cups to the Eight of Swords. He felt like you might as well cop a plea. It's nothing I could do for you. If, if this is what they have and this is just the beginning, I don't want to see more. You're, you're done. I'm out of here, right? So he may have allegedly, and I'm saying a strong allegedly, possibly put up one of his houses and some money for him to defend him. So, you know, allegedly, 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 um, that's not unheard of. A lot of people, you know, um, when they have a case this big, they'll put up their homes or, you know, whatever they have that is, you know, um, whatever they have that is of, of the highest value to cover any debt for a person that, or, you know, attorney to defend them. They'll put it up to the court. Like, you know, um, it, it even feels like, you know, Puff could have wanted to offer his homes as collateral. Like, I'm, you know, 
that could have been how he was going to put up his his bail like i'll put up x amount of money and i'll put up you know whatever the properties are and here it is it's like okay well they denied my bail so i'll sign over whatever to you in case okay so no matter what the lawyer was going to come out you know the legal team they were going to come out really really well but especially mr um attorney agnafilo because this is his specialty this is what he's known for this is exactly why he was hired so it was an incentive for him over the other lawyers to be on this case because it's his knowledge that was supposed to help win this case if that makes you know sense to anyone he's the specialist he's the legal analyst this is what he's known for this is what he's you know really really great at and not just good at so not to say that the other lawyers are not good lawyers these are all high-powered lawyers but this lawyer had the the magic touch for what it is they needed to do with this case Okay, so you've got the Queen of Wands here. Very, very um, high-profile woman or a woman who grabs a lot of attention. So this woman attached to the family. This feels like um, Janice Combs. And you've got the Tree of Life here at the bottom of the deck. So she not only would be the matriarch of the family, but she is the you know, the um, the backbone of the family, so to speak. So he's cut off the mom, he's cut off the children, he's cut off the whole family. He's not accepting any communication from anyone. Um, this is not, this man is not coming back. There's nothing that they can say to him, not in the energy that I'm seeing and feeling. And this is giving them a lot of anxiety but what he saw literally if you if you paid attention to the movie devil's advocate excuse my my washing machine y'all i'm doing all types of things at the same time maybe that's appropriate right now because the dirty laundry that came out in court attached to this um six of cups with this adult and this minor or minors because page of cups represents a minor and then there's a minor on this page as well that that it's like that gave him high anxiety it was it was horrifying to know that there could have possibly been truth to children being at these parties and in these festive moments so when you got the will of fortune with the empress under it also, you know, being that, you know, he's cut off the family. It's like, you know, Puff's mom now, of course, she's in control of the wealth. She's making all the decisions now. And, you know, she wants to push forward, forward movement and expansion. You know, she, she's trying her best to fight this as best she can. Yeah. Laugh now, cry later. This is attached to the energy at those, um, those events, those, those parties, so to speak. So it's like they invested a lot into these parties and they, you know, a, a lot into this lifestyle, the image of luxury. And now they're considering their options on what to invest in, what to do, how to move forward now that everything is coming full circle attached to these parties. But here it is. 
you know, this is higher authorities, King of Swords to the Five of Wands. The authorities are, are throwing everything in the kitchen sink at, at uh, Puffy. And this is just the beginning. This is not even going off into the trial. These are like preliminaries at this point. So to think that they're looking at footage now, and this is, we're not even in the trial yet. This isn't the trial phase. So if this is what they're coming out the box with, just in the beginning, this is the warm up. You're sunk in the warm up. There's no sense in me being here. There's no need for me to ride this out. I can tell as the lead attorney, as the specialist on this team, that if this is just the warm-up, this is the precursor of what they have, you're done. It's no sense in me being here. This is the energy that I'm getting. Yeah. And, it, and it's like, you know, in that moment, it's like something told him to, you know, the lawyer rather, told Mr. Agnifilo to follow his intuition because it's like you're going to jail anyway because the truth is going to come out. And at this point, it's like, it's not just if I can or can't win this case. It's the moral tug of war of if I should. Yeah, so I see right now that, you know, Puff feel, he feels highly betrayed. Um, it's like I gave you a lot of money. You know, I'm even trying to put my house up for you to go to bat and argue for me. And then you cut off me and my family and, you know, everything that's important to me. This man has an issue... <laughs> Y'all, every time I read Puff, this is crazy. Like, he has an issue, a major issue with accountability. He doesn't take accountability for much of anything, okay? So, you know, it's like, this case is going to drag on. It's going to take time. It's not going to be an easy case. It's not going to wrap up the way that Mr. Agnafilo is saying we're going to rush. We're going to push through with this case. This case is going to drag on. And yes, it was going to make a heck of a lot of money. But he knows also eventually for the... Okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's like... Who knows how long this case could last, okay? And it, it, it's showing me that the family could run out of money, okay? The money is slowing down. Knight of Coins, the family can run out of money. Mm -mm. So we've got a message coming through. And... After this anxiety, it's like, boom, we got trouble. We got a hangman here. Um, it's, it feels like Puff's mom is reevaluating, you know, um, the wealth and how to move forward on this case. But it feels like, you know, she's not being realistic about how much it's going to take and what it's going to cost to get another attorney to argue this case. Like, it's going to cost way more than what she is, expects, and the money is already tied up in some kind of way. It's already moving slower than expected. But, you know, here it is. It's like Ace of Cups, Three of Cups. It's like... Oh, this family is just, ugh. It, it, it's like, here it is. This person is, his, his mother, I mean, she loves him, but it, it's like she loves to party. She loves to invest in this opulent lifestyle and to look a certain type of way. And there could be ties to her and these parties as well that could possibly, 
you know, have her looking at doing some time. And it, it's like this lawyer wants to cut off this energy. He just wants to separate himself from this whole entire situation, purge this energy. He doesn't want any part of representing anybody in this family. He's done. Yeah, here it is, Six of Swords. He wants to leave behind a toxic situation and move forward. He, he definitely no longer wants to fight this case. So, you know, he, he's like, listen, I went from working to this case to laying this case to rest, Eight of Pentacles to the Four of Swords, because I have to follow my intuition. And my intuition is telling me that this, this is not good for me, let alone you. I, I, I don't want any more parts of this. Yeah. So Puff is now allegedly looking at this case like, well, you know, my, my star attorney has walked away. He's, you know, he's standing in judgment of me. He's betraying me when it comes to, you know, defending me. So now he's become defensive because his defense has walked away. Remember I said this man has issues with taking accountability. It's not, not once have I seen that he feels convicted because of what's on the footage. He feels betrayed because his lawyer, okay? His lawyer took a step back from what's on the footage and decided, no, thank you. So he, they're looking at, yeah, he, he's like, you know, well, give them more money, pay them more, do what you got to do to get them back. And it's, it's the lawyer's like, it's not even worth it. Um, he knows that eventually somewhere down the line, the authorities are going to tap anything that has to do with the resources to this family. So he, he he's getting to the point where he doesn't even care anymore because it's like, you know, if you run out of money, fine. You know, my job is to make sure that I help you to, you know, dwindle down the charges or to walk away from the charges altogether. But it's, it's like he, he doesn't even want the money anymore. And he doesn't think, it looks like allegedly when it's all said and done that he sees them being out of money one way or the other. Like if I don't take the money, the feds and the government, whoever else is going to take the money. Either way, the money is going to end up slowing down. Yeah. So here it is. This is a card of collaboration. The uh, three of coins here. Card of collaboration. So he knows that people are now going to collaborate and come forward. Oh, wow. And this was face down. Um, the Palace of Coins. They're going to come forward and collaborate to testify. And whatever this testimony is that is attached to the video and what came out in court on Friday, he feels like he's definitely going to prison. Um, the Palace of Swords. You've got the devil here, okay? And the devil who has this person bound, as you can see, this he's in a cage, but the door is open. So it feels like Puff felt like by Capricorn season, he could be released and just go to trial in, until further notice, but that's not happening. And now it's like he's really starting to think about how this is affecting his stability. Ace of Pentacles to the Four of Wands. Yeah, it's like they... He, he moved forward because it's like he realized this person loves being in this toxic energy, okay? Um, this is so bad. So here it is, the emperor. 
okay and the emperor is falling under this six of swords so yeah he had to take a stand and he had to choose what he felt was the best choice for him he felt like he made a righteous decision for himself this was something that he could not face he could not go any further with it was way worse than he expected he literally had his devil's advocate moment that day in court and he said no sir no ma'am i gotta push on i gotta move forward um this is above my pay rate and i know your pockets are deep but i don't even want it Yeah, he took a leap of faith after whatever he saw on those videos that had to do with these lovers, okay? They say a picture is worth a million, um, a thousand words, but like a video is, is, will have you speechless. So we got the star here. He had hope that they were going to be able to lay this case to rest. You know, he knew that it would be a 50-50 chance, however this could go, and he might not get out completely from under this case, but, you know, he could argue it down, play the semantics. But baby, no ma'am, no sir. He was like, jail for 200, please, Alex. And then here it is. Here's another minor. You got a page of cups and a page of wands, two minors. He, he knows no matter what, no matter what type of money he spends, allegedly he's going to bust hell wide open and go to prison. And it's nothing that he can do to stop it. And it's like he sat there and he juggled with, you know, his integrity, his beliefs. It's like, I, I knew from the beginning that this was a dicey case to take. It could go either way. But now he's decided, you know, I'm going to walk away. Let justice be served. So that's going to be my energetic tap in on Puffy's lawyer, attorney Mark Agnafilo quitting his job and walking away from this case while in court on Friday. Yeah, I'm not going to go too much further into this because there's a lot of anxiety around this man after what he saw. And just to know that that was only the beginning, he, he couldn't stomach going any further. He, he knew it was over right then and there. That, like, we don't have to go to court in in March. You're you're cooked now. You're done. And and I'm done with this case. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. And this is Life After Puffy, part 16. Mark Agnafilo. The attorney who decided to have a change of heart. Goodness gracious. Talk to y'all soon. Bye-bye, y'all.